Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Today we're going to take some of the topics that we've learned in the last couple of sections and kind of join them together and learn how we can move between mixed fractions and improper fractions. And let me explain a little bit about what that means first of all. What we're trying to say is, let's just take a little quick example from what we've had before. A mixed fraction would be something like two and a half. That's mixed, that's what we call mixed fraction, right? And this is something we talked about before. It means we have two pies plus another half pie, right? Now, something we talked about a couple of lessons ago also is uh, something we called an improper fraction. So this is improper fraction. And the reason it's improper is because the, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Um, it turns out, when you think about it, that the mixed fractions, two and a half, it, it represents when you have something more than one whole object. So two and a half pies, three and a half pumpkin, pumpkin cakes or whatever. So you always, when you have a mixed fraction, you always have more than one of something. But then we also talked about improper fractions, and we also said that improper fractions also mean that you have more than one of something. And you can go back to that lesson and, and refresh your memory on that, but we drew a lot of pictures and we showed you that when you have an improper fraction, you also have more than one of something. So here's what I want to drive home to you here. The point is, is mixed fractions written like this and improper fractions written like this, they both represent when we have more than one whole object. That's what they, they both do. And they're just different ways of writing the same thing. So it turns out that you can convert back and forth between mixed fractions and improper fractions because they both represent the exact same thing. They're both just trying to, to let you know when you have more than one whole object. More than one whole object. So the way you do it, I'll give you a little demonstration then we'll work a few problems. Uh, in this section, we're going to be writing mixed fractions as improper fractions, so we'll always be starting from mixed fractions. And then we're trying to end up as an improper fraction. The way you do it is, here you have two and a half. You take the bottom number, the denominator, and you multiply it by the two. That is going to get you four. Two times two is four, right? So what you have is you put a four, and then you add to it whatever the numerator is. In this case, it's one. And then you draw your fraction bar, and the denominator, the number two that you have in your fraction, it just stays the same. You don't add it or anything like that. It just stays along. And then you have four plus one is five. So here we have five halves. So I carefully chose this in the beginning because I wanted to drive the point home that two and a half pumpkin pies is exactly the same amount of pumpkin pie as five halves of a pumpkin pie. They're both the exact same thing. If I tell somebody, hey, give me two and a half cakes, and then they give me that. And then on another day I say, hey, give me five halves of a cake uh, or five halves cakes. Then they would go get the exact same amount of cakes. They would go give me two whole cakes and they would cut another one in half and they'd give me that. Because five halves is exactly the same as two and a half. All right? And we've drawn enough pictures in the past to kind of show you that. I mean, we, we can do it here again, but uh, basically the, this guy is going to be equivalent to this guy. So you can move and convert like this um, by doing this little math. So you take the bottom number times the big number, and then you add the top, so you have four plus one, and then the bottom number stays exactly the same. Okay, so um, in order to prove to you that this is true, let's just take a moment. If I have two and a half pies, let's just go ahead and quickly show real quick. Here's one pie, here's another pie, here's one that I have to make a third of. So here's pie number one, Here's pi number two, and the last one, let me just chop it in half, and this will be two and a half. That represents this guy right here. So let me draw a little bit of line, line over here, and then over here, let's do this one. So what I have here is pi number one, and I need to cut it into two pieces because I have a two on the bottom, and I have five pieces. So I have, here's piece number one, here's piece number two, but I actually need more pieces. I need five pieces, so I need to grab another pie, and I need to cut him in half because the bottom number is a two. Here's my third piece, here's my fourth piece. All right, but so here's four pieces when I cut these pies in, in, in halves, but I, I don't need 
only that many, I need one more. So I grab another pi and I cut him in half because of the bottom number, and here's my fifth piece. So when I'm doing it in terms of improper fractions, I grab my first pi, cut him in half because of this. Here's one piece, two piece, three pieces, four pieces, five pieces. It represents exactly the same amount of pi in both cases. So they're, they're no different. They just look a little bit different the way they're written down. So now that we've drilled that in, let's get a little bit of practice with converting between mixed fractions and improper fractions. So how would I do this? Well, if I have three and a third, you take the bottom three, you multiply it by the big number, that gives me nine, plus the number on the top, which is one, and then the denominator, the three, just stays the same. It just comes along for the ride. So nine plus one is 10, so we have 10 thirds. That is the answer. So notice here is a mixed fraction, here is an improper fraction, both of which represent the exact same amount of pi or cake or whatever it is I'm talking about. Okay, now let's go and say, with number two, we have four and two thirds. Four and two thirds, how would I convert that? to an improper fraction. Well, you take the bottom number and you multiply it by the four. So three times four is 12, and then you add to it the numerator, which is two, and the bottom is just going to keep the same number as this, which is three. So 12 plus two is 14 over three, so 14 thirds. So here's an improper fraction that's exactly equivalent to that one right there. All right, switch colors a little bit. Let's say we have three and one fifth, and I want to convert that to an improper fraction. So I take the five and I multiply by the three, and that's going to give me 15, and I add to it the one on the top, and then I keep the five on the bottom. So what I have is 16 on the top, five on the bottom, 16 fifths. That's the final answer. It's an improper fraction, exactly equivalent to what I have right here. The next problem, let's say we have six and one third, and I want to convert it. So three times six gives me 18, plus the one on the top. The bottom number is a three, and that stays the same. So 18 plus one is 19. Three remains on the bottom, and that is the final answer, 19 thirds. And we'll just do one more, just to solidify this stuff. Two and seven eighths. Two and seven eighths. So here we have eight times two, we go this way, eight times two gives me 16, plus the seven from the top over the denominator, which stays the same, eight. Okay, so 16 plus seven is going to be 23, and then the eight just stays along down here. So 23 eighths, and that is the final answer. So the most important thing for you to pull out of this section is two things. The first thing is, that mixed fractions and improper fractions are just two different ways to write exactly the same thing. And that is when you're trying to represent that you have more than one of something, like two and a half light bulbs or three and a half beach balls or whatever it is. So the improper way of writing it and the mixed fraction way of writing it can really mean the same thing. The second thing is you can convert from mixed numbers into improper numbers by using our method. You take the bottom number times the number in the front add the number on the top, that, that number goes on the top of your new fraction, the denominator of your fraction stays the same. You don't do anything to it. So that's how you convert from mixed fractions to improper fractions. I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Make sure you understand this, practice these skills yourself, make sure you're absolutely uh, rock solid, perfect with this type of uh, skill, and then follow me on to the next section where we will continue working with improper and mixed fractions.